In this part, we are going to add the load checkout functions to check out the plans. And since we need to use the user data, what is the user data? The user data is from the app.js, which tracks the user object from the Firebase. So we have to add the user context so we can pass the user data to all the other components. So first, we under this source folder, we create a new file. And we call this as usercontest.js. And inside the user contest, we import the create contest from react. And then we export the constant user contest is equal to create contest. And we set it as null. And then we back to the app.js and we import the user contest from user contest. So we type import user contest from user contest. And then we use the user contest dot providers to wrap the whole content. So at here we type user contest dot provider and then we copy this, we cut this and paste under here. So inside the home.js, we can get the values user by import the user context from we add and also import the use context. So we back to the home so we back to the home.js and we can get the user by using constant user is equal to use context and user contest. So now you can see it automatically imports the user contest and use contest from we add. After we already get the user data, we can continue the load checkout functions and we will buy these functions to our subscribe buttons. But first we have to install the Stripe. So if you go to npm and search Stripe, you can see this package. So we copy this and go to the terminal and paste the command here. So we back to the home.js and we are going to create a checkout functions. So we go to here and create constant checkout is equal to the arrow functions. And we are going to add the price ID success URL and also the cancel URL to the customer's collections. So we have to Plus the price ID at the record. So we type plus price ID. And since we will use async await, so we type async here. And then we are going to create the document reference by using constant document reference equal to await and then db dot collections. So actually we want to add the checkout session to the customer collections. So we have to use the user ID and this is the user ID. So we pass the customers and then we choose the user ID. And since we already get the user data from using the user contest, so we can go to document and then user.uid and then doc collections. And then we go to add a checkout section. And then we use dot app. And then price, and which is price ID. And maybe we can just use price ID because they are the same. We, we do not use price ID, price ID, because they are using the same, they are the same text. So we can just use once to imply the previous one. So the next is the success URL. And then we use window.location.origin. So after it's success, it will go back to the original page. And then we do the same for the cancel URL. So we duplicate this and then we type cancel URL. And we want to check if the content is changed. So we use dot ref dot on snapshot and then when the content chain we want to do something 
Because when there is a change on content, it will create a checkout session. And if there's a checkout session, we want to create a drive object with the publishable API key. So we are going to do it now. So to get the session ID, we can use constant error and session ID equal to snap dot data. And then if there's error, and we will just alert the error. If there's session ID, then we will use this to create a stripe instant. So we type constant stripe is equal to await and then stripe, load stripe. And then we will pass the publishable API. So we back to the stripe dashboard and we go to the home. And then if you go to the real test data, we go to the API keys again and we get the publishable key. So we copy this and then we paste to the load stripe and then we use stripe dot redirect to check out and then we pass the session ID. So we are going to find the checkout functions to the buttons. So we use on click and then we use checkout and then we pass the price ID by using the product data dot prices dot price ID. So we already create the checkout functions. And if we look at the website, you can see there is a error that user is undefined. This is because we forget to add the values to the providers. So we have to back to the user context dot provider and type values equal to users. So now we can see we get the page back and we can check it out if we go to the home.js and we type json.stringify and user. Now you can see the user data appeared here. So now, of course, we can delete this to keep the page clean.